Hi everyone, and welcome to this plant tutorial bite for oxygen not included. As always, make sure to check out the plant tutorial bite if you haven't already for an overview of the plant mechanics. In this plant tutorial bite, we're going to be looking at a special group of plants, the decorative plants. As their name suggests, these plants are mainly for improving decor and are very similar to each other, which is why I've grouped them into this one video. In total, there are eight decorative plants but three are only found in the Spaced Out DLC. In the base game is the Bluff Briar, Buddy Bud, Mirth Leaf, Jumping Joya, and Sporkid. Then in the Spaced Out DLC, also the Bliss Burst, Mellow Mallow, and Tranquil Toes. All of these plants work in the same way as I described in the plant's tutorial bite. They can be planted in any of the decorative plant pots, so the plant pot, wall pot, hanging pot, or aero pot. And once planted, they do not need any fertiliser like farming plants, and do not drop any harvest or extra seed. That means they are limited on any map, as you can only get seeds by digging them up around the map, or printing them from the printing pod. So how would you choose between them when decorating your base? Well obviously an important point is simply which seeds you have, but there are also three key differences between these plants. The first is their decor value, the second is the germs that two of these make, and third is their atmosphere requirements. Let's start with decor then, and I've lined up the plants here by their decor value. Most of these plants, that is 6 out of 8, have the same decor value of plus 25 at a 4 tile range. Only the buddy bud has a lower value of plus 15 at 2 tiles, and the spore kid has a huge plus 80 decor at a 7 tile range. But these aren't that surprising, because these two plants are the ones that give off germs. So let's take a closer look. The Buddy Bud and Spore Kid both release germs into the air over time, with the Buddy Bud releasing floral scent, and the Spore Kid releasing zombie spores. I covered these in more detail in the germs tutorial bite, but to briefly explain here, floral scent is generally a positive germ. When dupes breathe it in, most get the smelled flower status and get a 5% stress reduction for one minute but beware that dupes with the allergies trait instead get the allergies disease, making them sneeze and increasing stress by plus 15% again for one minute. Zombie spores on the other hand are quite nasty, and give dupes the zombie spores disease which is the worst in the game. Rather anticlimactically though, dupes do not become zombies, but do lose 10 points of all attributes for 18 cycles if infected. Naturally, spore kids live in oil biomes, that should usually be entered with an atmo suit anyway due to the temperatures, which will also protect against the zombie spores. But to actually use the spore kid, you can put it in areas that are only suit accessed, although even that is a bit risky, or the more common way to use them is to put them inside window tiles that let the decor through, but keeps the dangerous zombie spores in. Moving to the last main difference, this is the plant's livable conditions, which does vary. All of these plants can live in carbon dioxide, and all except the spore kid can live in oxygen and polluted oxygen too. That makes sense when you think about it, as all of the plants can be grown inside living areas. Note that the pressure for these gases needs to be between 150 grams and 10 kilograms per tile, with the exception of the jumping joya that actually has no pressure requirement at all. Perhaps more interesting than useful, is that the mirth leaf can also be grown in hydrogen or chlorine. I suppose that means you could use them to decorate areas with those gases, but I don't think this is a common use. Temperature is another key factor and differs across all of these plants. Most of them have a 20 or 30 degree livable temperature range around safe tube temperatures. Of course this should be fine if you have a cooled, well oxygenated living area, but there are three exceptions and the first is the jumping joya that can survive anywhere between 0 and 100 degrees. Combining this with the fact that it has no pressure requirements, really makes it objectively the best decorative plant of the six non-germ making plants, and is particularly useful for slightly hot living areas, commonly early on, as they will still grow. The second plant with a different temperature range is the Tranquil Toes, which likes cold temperatures between minus 90 and 0 degrees Celsius, like the radioactive biomes it's found in and the spore kid has by far the biggest temperature range, being able to live all the way up to 240 degrees. That means you could include them in a hot mixed industrial brick if you are feeling adventurous. 
so having covered all the types and their differences, I should quickly explain their use. The clue is of course in the name, and decorative plants are used to decorate and increase decor, especially in aero pots that also give their own plus 10 boost. You can use them intentionally around the base, commonly in living areas, or just throw them in afterwards. Increasing decor will increase tubes morale, and for more information about decor, see the dedicated tutorial bite. Buddy buds also have a less common use of protecting against slime lung germs. Because slime lung cannot appear in a tile that already has floral scent, using buddy buds can effectively prevent slime lung getting into areas if placed strategically. And lastly, another key use of the decorative plants is in the great hall to meet the room requirement. This is particularly notable as the flower pot is unlocked very early on, meaning you can get a crate hall very early with just this and a water cooler. So that's it for this look at all of the decorative plants in Oxygen Not Included. I hope this helps you decorate your base, and thanks for watching.